So about a year ago, I did a video focusing on the home screen of my iPad, kind of talked about the apps that I used and kind of my process of all that. And a lot of people seem to like it. So I figured I should do an update on it. It's It's been a year and honestly, a lot has changed in that time. So let, let's kind of take a look. So first off, you'll notice I don't have any apps on the home screen part. Everything is in the dock. The apps that are in the dock that you can see here are the apps that I use the most with multitasking, whether that's split view or slide over. The apps that are in the folder though, I do use quite a bit, but I don't use them in multitasking. Like LumaFusion, that, that's really a full blown app that I want the whole screen for. And I don't really go into this folder either to launch these apps. I mostly do it with Spotlight. So, you know, I'll bring up Spotlight and I'll just type in LumaFusion and I'd hit enter to bring it up. Overall, that works really well for me. I like this idea of everything being in the dock and a focus on multitasking. Though I would like to see something be done with the home screen because it does feel like a waste of space, especially since I have a 12.9 inch iPad Pro. They could bring widgets over there or do something else entirely, but I do think there should be something done with this home screen. But for me personally, apps living in the dock work really well for me. But let's kind of go through the apps and I'll start on the left and work my way to the right. So let's start off with Files. Files is a pretty straightforward app. Most of you guys probably already use it. I use it a lot with iCloud Drive or Dropbox, but I also have the iExpand Drive, which is my Lightning USB flash drive, Transmit, which is an FTP client, and Yoink. Those are all pretty big apps for me. Um, on my iPad, this section, the app that I use the most is this local storage app right here. This is so I can keep video clips and stuff of projects that I'm currently working on. I don't have much in here because I'm just starting this new project right now. The other big thing is tags. So I've been pretty big into tags. Tags are a great way of sorting everything. So you don't have to do search and remember exactly what you named a file. You can just kind of, you know, hit this tag and you can see all the podcast related stuff. You can see graphic design related stuff, photos, um, so on and so on. Like it's all pretty, pretty simple, but it's really well organized and I really like it a lot. Safari, there's not too much here. It's pretty, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm sure most of you guys use Safari as well. I really like Safari as a web browser because it's app puts a lot of work into it. They do a lot of great work to make sure it runs fast and things like that. There are also content blockers and things like that that you can download. I use a couple that I've just kind of been playing around with right now, and maybe I'll do a little more in-depth video on those. But overall, Safari I like because it's really fast. It works really well. I know there's Chrome and Firefox and a few other browsers for the iPad, and if you like those, that, that works great. But for me personally, I just feel like Safari works the best on the iPad. Next up is Spark, and I'm not going to open the app because I didn't really have a chance to kind of clean up all the stuff. I still have some personal emails and stuff in there that I don't really want to, you know, share with the world. So Spark is a great email application. It's really handy. It's free to download, so everybody can just, you know, download it, give it a shot. I really like the smart inbox feature and the way it organizes your mail. It wasn't something I was super excited about at first, but I gave it a second shot and it works really well. I like that it kind of breaks up newsletters and important things and kind of things like that. That's stuff that you may not necessarily, you know, want mixed in with all of your other mail. I, I like that feature. It works really well. Next up is Things. Things is kind of a really cool app, and it's my new task manager of choice. I really like it a lot. Something I've been playing around with is checklists. So you can tap on this item right here, and it'll expand, and you can see a checklist of all it is. Before, when I was using Todoist, each one of these would have been its own separate task, and it really makes your task manager feel cluttered, and it kind of can give you this sense of being overwhelmed. A lot of these tasks don't take too long, or they're you know important, but they're not something that really needs to be its own task. So now I can set up a, a, my video project. So I'm working on what's on my iPad and I can kind of come through and I can check these off. So, you know, we have an outline and script. We're recording the VO and the primary video track right now at the same time. So this is kind of how it works. And the nice thing about this, too, is with workflow and I'll show workflow in a little bit, too. I completely automated this. So all I have to do is enter the name of what I'm going to call the video and it'll build this whole thing automatically. It'll build the task. It'll create the checklist. It'll add a tag and then I can just drag it to whenever I want to do that video. So overall, it's really cool. I did do a much longer video on things. So if you're interested in that, feel free to check that out. I really love things. I think it's a great task manager. I know it's a little on the pricey side for a lot of people, which I totally understand. But if it keeps, you know, the development of it going, I'm all for that. Next up is drafts. Drafts has been my, my go-to um, note-taking app and writing app and, well, basically everything. Like I'm using drafts for any writing possible 
and that's all done through this workspace feature right here and I did this on my um, my bigger drafts video you can kind of see down here these are all the stuff that I, that I write so you know you can kind of come in here to scripts and see the scripts that I've written notes um, all stuff you know it's all really handy and I really like this stuff a lot it's it's really been a fantastic app to work with and where it shines is with all of its automation utilities too so you know all this stuff over here on the side is all um, actions that are inside drafts that'll do something with the text you're writing so overall that's, that's really cool I really really like drafts and I think it's just been a fantastic application it's getting really cool updates one thing that I'm really really liking is you can kind of come up here and you can kind of see all the recent drafts and all this stuff like it's it's overall it's just so cool and so handy to have um, I really like this feature here where you can rearrange the the text and things like that um, that's pretty cool oh you know something else that's really awesome that was just added is let's pull up a script here and I think um, I think things three will do it for us. Let us see. So when you have when you write in Markdown, you have headings and stuff like that. You can hit this button right up here in the top, this arrow down, and you can navigate to your the section. So if you have a much longer draft that's you know you don't want to scroll through everything, you can just tap on what you want and it'll take you to that section. I think that's a really really cool feature. That was something that was added um, while I was doing my my last drafts video. Agenda is the next app. Agenda is kind of my scratch pad pseudo note taking app specific for projects. So um, we'll come in here to um, keyboard video. So this is something I'm working on too. This will be the next video that I'm working on. Um, I just write some thoughts down, stuff that I want to include in my script for this video. And, and overall, it's a really nice way to kind of keep all my thoughts organized. Um, it, it, again, another free app to download if you're interested in just trying it out. I just like being able to put thoughts in here and being able to kind of move through everything. I think this is just overall a really handy feature to have. So the way I think about it is drafts is like where I write all my videos and scripts and all that stuff. But I just use agenda just for thoughts, thoughts on what's going to happen. That way I can put them in split view so I can have drafts open and then I can oh, take agenda here. And, you know, I could put them in split view. The one nice thing I really want to see, and they've actually said they're working on it, is dark mode for agenda. So I don't have to keep switching drafts back to the, the light mode. So overall, really cool application. I think it's really handy as, you know, as kind of a scratch pad. It's really meant to be like this daily planner app. But overall, it's like a scratch pad app. I think it's really cool to use. Next up is Instapaper. Instapaper is one of those apps that's just really, really just it's it's I think it was one of the first apps I ever downloaded on my iPhone when I first got an iPhone and basically the thought is is you can save articles and stuff from the web in it and you can come back and read them later in a really nice simplified view so you don't have you know a bunch of ads popping up at you and things like that it's it's it works really really well and I think it's just a fantastic application it's been one of those ones that I think I've had it on every single device that uh, you know I've ever used I think it's just pretty pretty cool there are other ones like Pocket and a few other apps like that that work really well. So if you're interested in those, check those out. But I think Instapaper is kind of, it's my go-to one. It's the one that I really, really enjoy using. Tweetbot is next. Tweetbot is one of those apps that I use probably too much. Um, but I do really like Tweetbot. I keep Tweetbot side by side with Slack because Tweetbot is one of those apps that it just, Twitter doesn't need 12.9 inches of screen space so it works really well in split view i just don't think it's a full screen app but overall tweetbot's really nice i like this activity feature you know you can kind of come through and you can see everything overall i, I really like that slack is really good too I am an Apple Music subscriber. I've been an Apple Music subscriber probably since day one. It's It's been a fantastic service for me. I really like it. I really like having it Siri integration and things like that. That's been pretty handy for me. Overcast is my um, go-to podcast player of choice. I've tried Pocket Cast. I've tried Castro. I've tried all the other ones, but Overcast just works really well. I really like it. Smart speed and voice boost. I know I've talked about this feature a lot. It, overall, it's just a really great app. Uh, my podcast player is probably one of the few apps that I never really switch out a lot. Like I'm pretty much always sticking with Overcast. 
Workflow, I, I mentioned I'd come come back to this. You can even see, so this is my new video checklist. This is the workflow that I was talking about before. Workflow will be getting replaced later this year with series shortcuts, which I am really excited about. Um, as soon as that comes out, I'm gonna have a bunch of videos on that. With Workflow, you can just automate tasks and it makes my life working on an iPad so much easier. There's just so much stuff you can do with it. You know, as, as opposed to just not having some sort of scripting or automation application, and what's really exciting is since it's going to become Siri Shortcuts and it's an app from Apple, it's going to be hooked into the system and there's going to be a lot more you can do with it. So I'm really looking forward to that. Yoink is the next one and Yoink is a shelf app. So you can kind of store stuff in here. Um, Yoink and as a full screen app isn't really that, that impressive. It's not what I get super excited about. But if you were to be in files or something like that, and um, let me bring that back up and you can kind of put Yoink right here. What's cool about Yoink is you can kind of come through here and let's, you know, let's bring something up. Um, you can just drag and drop stuff in here. And I've talked a lot about shelves apps. And basically it's this idea of temporary storage, kind of a lot like what a desktop is for um, a laptop or a, or a PC or something like that. I really like Yoink. Um, Gladys is another really good app application as well for this. I like Yoink because I think the design is just a little bit nicer, but you know everybody has their preferences and features and stuff that they want. Yoink, I just use it. It's kind of handy as just kind of like this temporary um, storage area. Like I said, it's it's just it, it it's hard to explain until you start using it. Once you start using it, it makes a lot more sense. We'll just kind of go through this folder. There's some apps in here that I really use a lot, like Fantastical, Luma Fusion, Pixel Mater, Affinity Photo, Ferrite, Pretext, uh, Brain FM. That's kind of like my um, noise focusing music while I'm writing deal. There, there's like, I just keep everything in here. There's, you know, you, as you kind of go further back, there's apps that I don't interact with as much, like um, Blur and things like that I use every once in a while. Um, overall, I like this setup. I like having applications all in the dock. It works really well for me. Um, I'm kind of curious what, what your guys' methodology is, so let me know in the comments below. I, I'm really curious about that. If you guys have any questions, I'm going to put links to all the apps in the descriptions below. You can find me on Twitter at Chris underscore Lolly. If you have any questions, hit me up there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.